So this is part of a series of lectures related to 5G cores and in this lecture we will be discussing and talking mainly about Massive MIMO. The outline of this lecture is as follows introduction to the motivation behind wireless technologies and uh, innovation in this domain and uh, then we move to uh, to answering the question related to how to achieve high spectral efficiency, then basic properties of Massive MIMO, Massive MIMO transmission protocol, and then give brief summary about what we have taken in during this lecture. So, Massive MIMO, the number of voice data connections has doubled every 2.5 years since the beginning of wireless. So each 2.5 years, the number of connections, number of devices, number of that, they are doubling every two to 2.5 years. So last 45 years, more than 1 million increase in wireless traffic, including FM, satellite, cellular, Wi-Fi, internet, all these technologies and LTE. And today, in, we are in 2020, yes? These days, the amount of traffic, data traffic, is measured in exabyte. Exabyte is something around 10 to minus 18, yes? We already mentioned that in one of the lecture. Exabyte is 10 to minus, 10 to power 18. So this is basically, more than Tera, more than Giga, and as you can see, the explosion in the data growth is going exponential. Exponential increase. So if you if you want to extrapolate this a little bit more, in six years, in five years from now, we will have six times of the data rate we have right now. In ten years, we will have forty times in 15 years we will have more than 260 times so as you can see the increase on the data on the data is really going exponential and to meet this demand we need technologies that can satisfy the user requirements so what technologies can meet this the technologies basically are most of them related to improving the data rate. To improve the data rate, you need to improve, improve basically the network throughput, the, thro the area throughput. And how do you improve the area throughput in a cellular network that's divided into cells and users served by a base station, as you can see in this figure? Basically, the way you can do it is by increasing the cell density Instead, for example, instead of using only one base station here, you can use multiple small base stations and assign all the user within one cell. So you either increase the cell density or you increase the available spectrum. Instead of assigning only 5 megahertz here, you assign 10. But we will look into the difficulties of assigning 10 and the difficulties of increasing the cell density or you can increase spectral efficiency by coming up with techniques transmission techniques intelligent transmission techniques that can improve the spectral efficiency in general so basically this is the goal we want to increase the area throughput bits per second per kilometer square within a given area like this you want to increase the data throughput so that more users can be served more data rate can be given and everybody will everybody is go is feeling happy so ways to achieve that 10 times improvement is by increasing the cell density or assigning more spectrum or increasing the spectral efficiency and this is how Nokia achieved that for example and this is how tele, uh, SK Telecom, other companies are achieving that. But what's the problem here? I mean, if it was that easy, everybody would stop doing research, I mean. 
it just increased the cell density spectrum this and that and it's done it's over the pro we have we have no problems anymore but it's not that easy unfortunately because when you increase when you go with the first solution increasing the cell density increase the number of cell per kilometer you end up basically which is the traditional way way to improve throughput the issues the issues related to this solution are the following first you need to rent places and therefore the deployment costs increases and when you increase the number of small cells interference gets worse and Wi-Fi along with cellular is already very dense coverage is the issue you cannot improve the coverage that's why this doesn't seem a feasible solution anymore you cannot think to, to which level you can inc increase the cell density and can you really install a base station in every place you want you need to rent a place uh, you rent it for a long period of time like uh, basically you in, when once you install a tower you basically you need to keep paying for the place rent and uh, the deployment costs increases interference gets worse and many other issues this is these are the issues with cell density what about spectrum i can improve the throughput by increasing the spectrum yes yes i can improve by increasing the spectrum but the spectrum is also very crowded below 5 gigahertz there is no more space for you which spectrum you can buy every most of the spectrum below 5 gigahertz is heavily utilized by everybody by many applications and why do we like the spectrum below 5 gigahertz because of the propagation characteristics it can propagate for larger areas for long distances and that's why we like the frequencies below 5 gigahertz sometimes we call them the golden frequencies very precious very expensive frequencies and it's already occupied and located for services for above 5 gigahertz however the people who are saying why don't you use millimeter wave and terahertz communication and laser communication and these things we tell him that it's okay yes we increase the bandwidth but the propagation becomes very bad because of losses you mainly end up having scenarios where you can only serve the users who are 10 meters away from you or less even sometimes and it cannot penetrate through walls so not favorable environment for transmission so what else we are left with one solution which is increasing the spectral efficiency now unlike the other previous solution the other previous solutions are obvious uh, straightforward you just need to get licenses get money deploy them more thing yeah i mean no much intelligence here basically the the here the intelligence comes here when you want to increase the spectral efficiency within the same cell the same resources here some time you want to increase the number of databases you can transmit here where intelligence comes into the picture here where you need to invent and come up with better solution and one solution for this problem is Massive MIMO. Now we will look how Massive MIMO can handle this or mitigate this spectral efficiency problem a little bit. Now let's say, let's read this sentence together. And this sentence is said by, quoted by uh, the FCC commissioner, Jessica reason of force it's actually in two th he said that statement in 2014 he said imagine that we decided to reward the first person who finds a way to make spectrum use below 5 gigahertz 50 or 100 times more efficient over the next decade the reward could be something simple say 10 megahertz of a spectrum suitable for mobile broadband so he's basically saying, let's think of a solution that can improve the spectrum 50 or 100 times, mean 100 times the current spectral efficiency. If your spectral efficiency right now is 10, I want it to be 1000. 
If you can improve this, if you can come up with a technique that can improve this, I will give you 10 megahertz of spectrum. Now, Carlos might tell me, what, what am I gonna do with 10 megahertz of spectrum? I want money, I don't want spectrum. Okay, I tell him, the price of, of the price of 65 megahertz of spectrum at frequency 1.2, 2.1 was sold in 2015 for 45 billion dollar. Yes? So if I give him 10 megahertz, basically I'm giving him 8 billion dollar. Not million, billion. So it's basically you become the richest man in the world. So here, here, why we teach you communication. We want you to invent a technique that can make you eligible for a reward of 10, of 10 megahertz of spectrum. And then you get that, you sell it for the people who want that, the people who want that spectrum for eight or $10 billion. Does this make sense to you? Why the reward in megahertz? I think it's a very amazing reward if you can come up with, if you can come up with a solution better than the existing solution. That's why we are doing research on communication. Yes. I will retire after that. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> course, <laughs> of course, you are right. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to work anymore. I I always say, just do one great work and make it work and convince the people with it and make it outstanding and then you don't need to work anymore just uh, uh, focus on the other important thing in life so this is amazing yes so we need to improve the spectrum by 50 this is the goal higher spectral efficiency of course with one with your uh, friends we were able to improve the spectral efficiency double it uh, in, in their graduation project, but we need more, even more of that. But it's really, it, it's really intelligence, about intelligence and the ability to understand the systems, how they work properly, and then come up with the proper solutions and innovative groundbreaking techniques that can beat all the existing current methods uh, that can improve with less cost, of course, less complexity, less power consumption. We don't want to say that we can achieve this, but you can need to do this, 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 that. No, with limited resources, we always try to do this. So in point-to-point -point, point -point communication, the spectral efficiency is limited and governed by Shannon capacity. And basically, uh, this, this is... Uh, uh, as we explained in the previous lecture related to NOMA, capacity is equal to bandwidth log 2, 1 plus signal-to-noise ratio. Now, signal-to-noise ratio here, I remove W because W has nothing to do with spectral efficiency. W is the resource. Now, within this resource, how many data bits you are transmitting? This is the question, within that resource. And we assume it for simplicity here, we assume it it's 1 hertz here, per hertz, per user. And here, one plus signal-to-noise ratio, signal-to-noise and interference ratio. And the way you calculate it, you just measure the received signal power and divide it by the interference power plus the noise power. And as you can see, the spectral efficiency increases as you increase the power. But you are always limited in power. You cannot transmit any power you want. The issue here to move from 4 bits per second per hertz to move from a spectral efficiency of 4, 4 bits per second per hertz to 8 bits per second per hertz, which means doubling the spectral efficiency, you need 17 times more power. And that's unacceptable. That's too much. We cannot power, we cannot transmit our signals with any power we like, we any power we want, because we are always limited with power. So the, uh, then what's the solution? One of the solution may be to have parallel transmission, especially focused to each desired user. So here the conventional transmission method, you have one omnidirectional antenna covering all, uh, all this area and all the users are getting their data from this. But what if you can uh, squeeze this coverage uh, this radiation pattern of the antenna 
into directional and directional pattern like this and you can allocate the whole bandwidth into that spectrum and there is no interference between the other ones in this case uh, we, we, we can improve the spectral efficiency or the net, the throughput the area throughput as you can serve multiple users and this is what we call it what we call multi antenna transmission parallel transmission but to which limit we can improve this? You know, to, imp to, to do that, you need the channel response of each user. You need to process it at the base station, pre-code it, and send it. So it's going to be heavy processing and lots of complexity and latency in this. So sometimes it's not very feasible. So in cellular multi-user MIMO, which is this case basically, what do we do? We have the base station with M antennas. Yes, and we have parallel uplink downlink for K users. Channel coherence block TC symbols, and this is the we already know the coherence time of the channel, and we try to make our packet or data transmission length to be less than the coherence time of the channel, so that the channel doesn't change while we are transmitting. So we call this the duration TC symbols. So in theory. Hardware is the limiting factor. Spectral efficiency roughly proportional to the minimum number among the number of antennas at the base station or number of users or TC number of symbols over two. If you want to, to double the improvement, you need to double the antennas and user for TC ranges between 100 and 1000. So practically what will you get? You will... This is in theory. In practice, you will get co-user interference. And co-user interference, the interference between the users, is the limiting factor because the users will need to send their data to the base station directly, immediately. And they don't have many antennas to make the beams focused, so they will interfere with the other users in the uplink. And this is really very challenging. Each user is transmitting his data, interfering with the others. Assuming that you are using a similar frequency and you are trying basically to multiplex them in spatial domain. So in LTE, in LTE advance, you can use up to eight antennas. And thus you have small gains because it's very hard to learn users' channels and hard to coordinate the base station with each other. And due to these reasons, it, it seems that you cannot make use of MIMO anymore. You cannot improve it more than this. As if you, as if you will not be able to get more advantage if you increase the number of antennas and user. This is for the case of multi user MIMO. You can increase it up to certain limit. Especially, especially the limiting thing here is the decoding complexity. When you have multiple antennas with multiple users, it's the decoding complexity is very, very tough and very hard, not very sophisticated, not easy to do. So if we want to just like Look at multi-user MIMO from a different perspective. Instead of limiting the number of antennas and limiting the number of users, let's say we have the number of antennas at the base station much, much, much larger than the number of users. The users have single antenna, single antenna, each one of them single antenna, and the base station has more than 200 antennas, let's say, around 200 antennas. So the point here, many more antennas than users. And M is the number of antenna, K is the number of users, and M is much greater than K. In this case, in the downlink transmission, you will have very directive signals to each user because you have too many antennas. Little interference leakage. Yes, spectral efficiency proportional to number of users. So basically, the minimum number of all of these is K. For example, if you have 100 user, the spectral efficiency is going to be close to 100 times. Now, what's the key difference from multi-user multi 
user antenna. You, you, massive MIMO, we said we have the condition for massive MIMO, the condition for having massive MIMO, or to say I have massive MIMO, is to have the number of antennas at the transmitter or at the base station much larger than the number of users. And this means if you have 40 users, the number of antennas should be greater than 200. So for that case, we for this scenario, we will have a certain property that I will explain it in the coming slides that will surprise you how things, how math now helps us to overcome some of the inherent problem problems from multi-user MIMO. So number of antennas, we all know that we already have many antennas at the base station. Have you ever seen tower like this, many antennas? Is this massive MIMO? Three sectors, 20 element antennas, 60 antennas for 4G, you have eight MIMO multiplied by 30, 240 antennas. It's not that. Massive MIMO is not that. Massive MIMO is about money fully digital steerable antennas. Massive in number, not massive in size. So you basically see this, for example, all these patch antennas, all of them, they have RF chain. And you can steer it, you can send data from it, you can play with it the way you like and make them coordinate all of them with each other. This, this massive amount of antennas can create, can create basically, if you configure them properly, can create multiple beams, like based on the number of users you have. But all of them together, not all, like you have maybe 200, 200 antennas, but you create only 40 beams. All of them together, they create 40 beams. And these beams, they are not interfering with each other. This is the condition for these beams when you design them. So conventional cell, the way to deploy massive MIMO, you basically distribute them in the, in the area you want to cover. In conventional cellular deployment, no overlapping coverage area, one or multiple sectors per cell. So, but in massive MIMO, we have either co-located co deployment or distributed deployment. Basically, in distributed deployment, you put the antennas in different locations and the processing will be uh, on a remote server far from the location where the antenna is low, is installed. And we call this, for example, rectangular, rectangular array antenna. This is linear and this is cylindrical where the antennas are placed in all. The key benefit of the key benefits of massive MIMO in this case for outdoor users handle mobility and guarantee coverage. For indoor user, no need to put base station inside building. This is the key characteristics. And now let's go to the math of how Massive MIMO works and what's the, as you know from the previous slides, it's all description and no much technical mathematical formulas behind that. But what's, what, what's the catch here? What's, what makes Massive MIMO different than multi-user MIMO? Now, to make it clear for you, and before we go to the math, I just want to explain the following thing for you. Now, let, let's say we have the base station here, yes? Everybody can see this line. And let's say you have here, you have here one user. Yes. And this base station basically, has let's say array of antennas one two massive three four five six seven eight and there is here here in between them there is medium i don't know there are buildings there are trees there are cars i don't know as you know rich scattering environment and here user 
and here channel edge and you have on the other side what do you have you have the receiver the base station rx and here tx let's say this user is communicating with the base station he has one antenna and sends his signal his signal the base station let's say now uses only one antenna so when this is in deep fade everybody knows deep fade from wireless communication if this is in deep fade then most probably you will not be able to receive this successfully and your data is lost but when the base station uses two antennas yes instead of one two antennas and this same signal of course it gets reflected of money thing and it can reach from all the direction but the base station can only receive it from this direction when this antenna is active when it when it uses it so basically you will you will receive another signal from this antenna now you have two signals are carrying the data to your base station what's the probability you are in deep fade you have two links the probability you are in deep fade one over two so the probability that your data is not received successfully is one over two yes what if you have a three 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 antennas you activate them if this is in deep fade this is in deep fade this is this can make the connection if there is no deep fading here the probability here that the probability when you have three antennas the probability that you don't get your data successfully dec decoded requires that all the all the link experience deep fade and if all of them experience deep fade then you won't get your data successfully but what's the probability that all the that what's the probability each one of them be in deep fade one over three and when you increase to three this means the probability that all of them simultaneously in deep fade reduces what about when you have four when you have ten when you have let's say what about when you have one hundred what's the probability that you your data your data link is in error or you cannot receive it it's one person this is where massive mimo comes into the picture the more antennas you activate at the base station and you are receiving the same signal from the user yes the less probable your data will be lost because if it is not received here from here properly most probably it will be received from here because the channel is rich scattering if it is also not properly from here maybe from here if it is not from here maybe from here at the end of the day you you make sure that the probability the probability that you don't receive your link with good quality is very low and this is where massive MIMO comes into the picture. But now let's move into the math and not with only just receiving. We, we, after you receive your data, you need to process it successfully so that you get your data back. To understand this mathematically, let's assume we have two users. Yes, user one, user two, and send signals, SK. Uh, user one send S1 and user two send this for k equal 1 to k, k denotes the user number and in this case what's the channel response the channel response at the base station for user 1 for user 1 yes user 1 you have h1 and for user 2 you have h2 now why did I make h1 and h2 bold because they are vectors vectors here means the signal you transmit it from here you receive it from all the antennas so basically h h1 is equal to h11 means the this this represents the user number and the second one represents the antenna number 
So basically, the base station here receives the user one signal from all the antennas. So the channel vector is HK, where K is the user number, and then the second number represents the antenna number at the base station until M. M is the total number. And this, when you model it in MATLAB or the the most uh, the most approximate modeling of this channel characteristic is to be Gaussian. So basically, HK, you, you, HK1, HKM, you take them from complex Gaussian random variable with zero mean, and here zero is vector for all of these H inside the vector, and I, uh, IM is variance equals to one. This I matrix, you can write it like this, diagonal, and all are zeros. The noise also uh, complex Gaussian with this zero and I am. Then the received signal, the received signal at the base station here, what, when, when two users are simultaneously transmitting their data over the same time, same frequency. Yes, agree? This is kind of NOMA, yes? Yes, you agree with me? This is similar to NOMA. H1, S1, this is the signal. And H2, S2, this is the signal on top of it. Yes, both of them on top of each other. But the, And they reach the base station, yes? Now the goal here, the, the base station needs to get each user signals alone and separate it from the rest so that it understands what the user wants and get back to him with the data re with the data required so to do that the base station estimates the channel knows the channel of the user with respect to the antennas and knows the channel of the second user with respect to the antennas it learns the channel during the uplink there is, there are pilots and it learns the channel from this assume that the channel is known for both users then to detect for the channel for the base station to detect the data related to user one it just uses mrc maximum ratio combining and this is how it works you, you the base station receives y yes the base station is interested in decoding user one data first so it basically multiplies y by w1 h H is the conjugate Hermitian. Basically, H is uh, W to W1 is equal to H1 divided by the number of antennas M. And you take the Hermitian of it. When you take the Hermitian, it becomes like conjugate. Conjugate. When you multiply any complex number with its conjugate, what do you get? You remove the phase and you get the amplitude square. And this is basically what you get here. When W1H multiplied by H1, you get 1 over M abs absolute square of H1 to power 2. It's basically this one. And this, interestingly, when the number with M is very large, when M is very large, the expectation of this, which gives you the mean, tends to be 0. This means that there is no fading anymore, no fading signal, you just get your signal. When you multiply this with this, the result here 1, and this term go, remains S1. Now, what about the second term? The second term, when you multiply W1H, which is related to H1 channel, with H2, which is related to user 2 channel, and it's independent from user 1 channel, you, and when m goes to infinity, you find out that the expectation of these values goes to zero. That's interesting. You mean that when I multiply this with this, this term goes to zero, and I will get zero interference here? This is amazing. I just get the, the just user one data. And what about the noise? When I multiply w1h with n, H1 with both are independent from each other and they are complex Gaussian. When you take the expectation, it also goes to zero. 
That's amazing. Both these terms that are always causing problems to me, noise problem and interference problem, I'm getting rid of them and getting zero. And here is one. I'm getting rid of fading, so I am getting only my signal is one without any errors, without any performance degradation whatsoever. This is what what any communication engineer would like to do, would like to get actually. But that's the, the surprising thing about Massive MIMO. All the work on Massive MIMO and all the attention and the hype and the work that have been done so far, most of it because of this simple, most of it because of this simple mathematical trick. You remember with me this? That when n, when the number of antennas goes to infinity, and infinity I mean 200 antennas, 1000, something like this, the expectation of the channel H11 square goes to unity, and anything independent of that for any other users goes, goes to zero in a rich scattering channel, focus, rich scattering channel, and m goes to infinity. These are the two conditions. Rich scattering channel, M goes to infinity, you get this mathematical phenomenon. And this mathematical phenomenon makes our life extremely easy in communication. Because you, you get rid of fading here, you don't need to do equalization anymore. And you get rid of, you get rid of interference, you don't need to do any successive interference cancellation procedure. And you get rid of noise. You don't need to use coding to protect your data from noise. So what a marvelous, what a, an amazing system. And this is Massive MIMO. When you, call, when you say Massive MIMO, you should keep in mind that you are increasing the number of antennas close to infinity, which means 1,000. And you should mathematically, when you are writing the paper, take into account that when you multiply, when you do these multiplications, you get... Here, one, you get zero, zero. No interference, no noise, no fading, and you just get your data as it was at the transmitter side. There is nothing you can do much better than this. But what's the problem? I mean, I mentioned all the benefits and didn't say the drawbacks. The drawbacks that this, for this to happen, you need your number of the number of antennas at the trans at the receiver needs to be really really large. Clear. And what else? You need to process it with MRC. For each you for to get user one signal, you need to multiply by W1H. For user two signal, you need to get. You need to get Y again and multiply it by W2H, which is related to H2. So you repeat this processing for each user separately to get his data back. So that's why we we make this statement. Asymptotically, this, this is not interference free. Yes. Uh, is this W and uh, a matrix? Are these matrices? These are vectors. These are vectors. Ma matrices, we, don't, we denote matrices by capital bold. Here, vectors. For example, as I saw, I, as I show you here, it's vector and column because of the transpose, something like this, this vector. And this is the same. You can check this with MATLAB. I checked it myself and found it true. Amazing how it works. I mean, uh, since they are independent, rich scattering channel M goes to infinity. When you multiply these with each other, you, yeah. interestingly, you get these values. And due to this, this is math numbers. But when you map it to physics, it means no interference, no noise, no fading. And that's what we want in communication. But at the expense of increasing the number of antennas at the receiver and uh, increasing the complexity a little bit. So that that's the and you can all only make use of the you can also in uplink you can use this and in downlink as well but in downlink you need to pre pre process your data before you transmit it that's the interesting thing about this
variation. Now everything after that is basically around these th these three phenomena that I explained to you. Uh, they, they, this is the most important single slide that uh, explains everything about massive MIMO. And the remaining are really to explain these things. Now, uh, due, to, due to having uh, no fading, yes, as you can see here, the, the channel tends to be unity. We call this phenomenon channel hardening which means the channel gets static at one value and the value is one doesn't require equalization so variation of effective channel reduces with m as you increase m as i explained as i explained in the drawing here as you increase m the variation of effective channel reduces which means that the probability you receive your data uh, from a certain link wrongly reduces significantly as you increase the number of links and basically this is the behavior of the channel as you increase the number of antennas yes you you have this the channel is changing uh, too much but when you increase the number of antennas the channel tends to be close to one which is the mean and the variance reduces one over the variance when you say 1 over 1000 when you have one antenna 1 over 1000 it's very when you draw it it's very tiny the variance is like this no variance it's sharp so it means no uncertainty no variations no fluctuations so it, it scales with M, as you increase M, the channel tends to be closer to one, and we call it, the channel now is, is close to hardening case, and variation reduces. This is by exper mean value and one real. You can also get these curve, curves from MATLAB. Assumptions now for this, we assume that it's IID really fading, no dominant directivity, and very many scattering objective. Like this, in a, you are in a city, like this, New York. You are in a rich, you are in a very dense city to have rich scattering and to realize really fading, to have that independency. Now, this is less true in many other environments for example when you have line of sight line of sight channel you, you don't line of sight you don't have really you don't have you have only users with certain direction of arrival with respect to the antennas at the receiver or at the base station so this this might in line of sight I might not holds anymore my actually it doesn't work in line of sight so you basically you want to have an environment like this rich scattering environment so this is how the channel behaves in iid in iid and this is in measure the practical one so there is kind some difference in practical scenarios because not all the environments give you that realistic assumption that you have always iid channel so asymptotic this is what we want we want m to go to to go to infinity so that we when we multiply the two vector ch two independent users channels with each other we get zero and really fading channel now th this table summarizes the differences between multi-user mimo that uh, that's not really very desirable compared to massive MIMO and massive MIMO the differences between them in terms of antennas required for two cases in classical multi-user MIMO the number of antennas at the base station are close to the number of users so you basically if you have 10 users you have 10 number of antennas in massive MIMO, the number of antennas should be much, much, much larger than number of users. This is key assumption, and this is what you need to start your paper with. 
in case your paper or your work is related to massive MIMO, you need to assume that uh, number of antennas at the receiver greater than number of users. Single processing, non-linear is preferred in multi-user, but in massive MIMO, linear is near optimal. Duplexing mode, in multi-user MIMO, you have TDD and FDD, but in massive MIMO, you have TDD with reciprocity. Now, let's, let me explain TTTD with reciprocity to you. Now, in TTD, the uplink, yes, the uplink, let me ex explain it here on the figure. The uplink between users and the base station and the downlink here with another downlink here from the base station to the user, it, it happens on the same frequency, but they use different time slots. So now since it's the same frequency and the channel response depends on the frequency, the uplink and downlink will have the same channel response, yes? So basically, how would this benefit us? If you can estimate the channel during the uplink while the, while the user is transmitting to the base station, you will use that channel estimation to decode, to record your data and send to the user. So you don't need to carry you don't need to carry out channel estimation in both directions. It's enough to do it in one direction and you apply it on the other, as long as you are within the coherence time of the channel. Instantaneous channel, regarding instantaneous channel, for multi-user MIMO, affected by frequency selective and fast fading. In massive MIMO, as we have shown you, there is it, the, the almost no channel equality variation. Why is that? We get channel hardening here because of the fact that the, the expectation value tends to be equal to one unity. Mm. Professor? Yes. But uh, how can we assume that there are more antennas than users? Like, uh, let's say in a place, how can there be more antennas than users? Yeah, in 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 current in current system, what we do in uh, look at the base stations. Usually, let's say you are an area like this. You have twenty users. You make sure that. In a certain area, you assume that this area on average will have always 20 users, on average. And you make sure that the number of antennas here 10 times more. How do you, you, you already installed this base station with let's say 1000 antennas. 1000 antennas here at the base station. These are small antennas, don't think of them, they are big or this, but collectively together, they make big structure. So basically, based on the number, you try to make sure that the number of antennas at the base station always is greater than the number of users. Be because of why? In order to make sure that you have enough number of realization, channel realization for each symbol you transmit from the base from the user. Because when you have more number of realization, the probability you are in error degrades becomes less and this is why we need large number of antennas but in a practical system now look at around you most of the base stations they don't have this massive capability that's why it's expected to be used in systems for 5g and beyond but this is definitely going to improve the performance and serve more users and increase the spectral efficiency but at the cost of what money, complexity, more antennas, more processing, more resources at the base station. Variation in user load, scheduling needed, if k greater than m, scheduling in massive MIMO is not needed, it's automatic. Scheduling means allocating the resources you have to the users. Resource allocation, rapid, you need to perform resource allocation due to channel fading, but in massive MIMO, you, you, you basically don't need to uh, perform resource allocation based on channel variation because you don't have channel variation. 
but you just allocate the resources based on the uh, slow time scale like if you are far near the base station you need to adjust the parameters accordingly cell edge performance only good for multi-user MIMO if base station cooperate with each other coordinate with each other but in massive MIMO improved by the array gain of the M number of antennas base station cooperation highly beneficial if rapid only uh, in massive MIMO we have only long term coordination we don't have uh, short term coordination even there are papers that say that massive MIMO can enable cell edge free or cell free you don't have edges here when you have another base station here and covering another 20 or 40 users in massive MIMO you don't have edges most of the users gets the same performance if you properly design it which is very nice thing to have actually in your system but as I told you everything comes at some drawbacks if you can handle these drawbacks and afford them then you will have the you will realize these gains but otherwise it might not be feasible and as I told you it doesn't work in all the environments and you have the condition it's 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 similar to Noma kind of it has some preconditions prerequisite to make it work for Noma we said the users should be separated from each other one should be strong and one should be weak like near and far and here you have uh, again another assumption that the number of antennas at the base station much greater than the number of users and we cannot as we cannot assure that all the time because what if the area here all of a sudden becomes very populated and extremely dense let's say there is a gathering or there is a ceremony or something and your base station you cannot change the antennas quickly or you cannot scale it you already installed it once 1000 antenna and you have now in the area 2000 antenna 2000 users you in that case massive MIMO will not work if you want to but if you bring another base station that's movable you can carry it with a car and put it here and assign a few users to it and a few users to there so that you make sure that massive MIMO still can work in that case it's also a solution otherwise no downlink MIMO precoding now this we were talking about uplink downlink MIMO precoding in case in case of non-line of sight really scattering uh, you have rich multipath propagation in parameters to estimate per user see the estimation also is problematic in massive MIMO for each user you need to estimate the channel response of the user with respect to each antenna in the base station and you need to estimate it to estimate it properly so that you get that gain so a recording here is basically we sometimes we call it a recording sometimes we call it beamforming but it's not like line of sight it's not like this one yes it's this is not this in line of sight we get this because you don't have you have line of sight and you don't have rich scattering environment you 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 align your beams based on the angles of the users but here you don't get this what do you get then here you get you record your data before you transmit it in such a way that the signal is concentrated here concentrated here concentrated here that's why in line of sight we call it recording angular beam forming but here recording is not equal to angular beam forming it's like uh, focusing the energy at, at the location of the user and here the how to limit the pilot overhead here basically this slides to tell you that you can estimate the uplink the uplink the downlink channel from the uplink and it's better to use TDD because it's scalable rather than FDD. And here how you assign the pilots. Basically in the uplink, in the uplink, in the frame structure, in the uplink, you assign the pilot symbols at the beginning of the frame. And when you transmit it, the base station estimates the channel based on this pilot and use the estimated channel to record the data in the coming, uh, in the coming 
uh, subframe. In that case, you don't need to perform channel estimation in uplink and downlink, and that saves resources, which is another advantage, another merit. So the other ones are basically uh, talking, explaining the previous things we talked about, but there is also another problem associated with Massive MIMO that I should mention is pilot contamination. Now the pilots, uh, what's the problem here? The pilots that you assign to the users to use should be orthogonal with each other. Orthogonal so that you get no interference. But with, when you have another neighboring base station, you need to reuse these pilots again. So what happens here, while the user is transmitting his pilots and the other user here is using the same pilots, he gets the interference from the other user here. So basically, you need to reuse the pilots and in frequency. You need to allocate maybe them, allocate them in a different frequency, make them separated well from each other. But when you, when you use frequency reuse, you also limit the number of users you can serve within one base station. So this is a trade-off also, pilot contamination a problem in, in Massive MIMO, which is also something that's not desirable at all. So resource allocation 5G, special modulation, and here how many antennas are needed to achieve certain data rate or spectral efficiency. Number of base station antenna on the x-axis here, and number of users. And here total spectral efficiency. As you can see, the, number, the total spectral efficiency increases significantly as you increase the number of base station antennas. And this is the case we are handling here for each uh, slot here, for each uh, diagonal here. You have base stations serving multiple users. And these results are obtained for the case when signal-to-noise ratio is 5 dB and the channel is really fading. And we use zero forcing detection and pilot reuse is equal F equal 3. So in summary, Massive MIMO is the way to increase spectral efficiency in 5G networks and beyond. It gives us 20x, 20 times gain over IMT advanced base stations with many small antennas and transceiver chain. This is the most complex part of it. So if we were to summarize, yes, Massive MIMO improves the spectral efficiency, but it causes, we have many problems as, also as well. We have the, the first, the first problem is the assumption that we have rich scattering environment. We have a large number of antennas at the base station, and these should be much, much larger than the number of users, which is something we cannot guarantee all the time. And we have the pilot contamination problem and the heavy processing at the base station. So you, 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 you now decide whether you buy this or not. Every advantage you bring, at the other side, you cause some drawbacks and disadvantages. It provides high spectral efficiency, not per user here, per cell. Many potential deployment strategies. Facts to remember, massive MIMO is not massive size. Uh, favorable propagation in most propagation environment. We need this. Resource allocation and the processing are simplified, not complicated. Yes, simplified, but you we we need to to do that processing. You need to the, to estimate the channel of all the users and have it and restore it and do the processing for each single user. So this is really heavy and something to reconsider and take into account while we are designing future wireless systems based on massive MIMO. So with this, we conclude our lecture and stop here. And thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next time.